Hello everyone, welcome back to Library Says. I'm Jamie and today I'm going to tell you all about my Contemporary-a-thon TBR. So if you saw my 2020 goals video, you know that one of them is to participate in readathons to completion, hopefully. My first one is going to be Contemporary-a-thon hosted by Chelsea, Julie, and Natasha. Links for their channels down below. This readathon consists of seven different challenges and fortunately they are allowing us to double up on challenges so we don't have to read seven books to complete the entire readathon. Thank goodness. I have four books planned. I don't anticipate being able to read any more than those in a week. We'll see. Maybe. Those are the four I plan on reading. So those are the four I'm going to tell you about today. First off, let me tell you about the different challenges. One is to read a contemporary with green on the cover. Two, read a contemporary from a new to you author. Three, read a diverse contemporary. And remember that this is happening in February, which is Black History Month. Four, read a backlist contemporary. Something that you, me, I, have had on my TBR for over a year. Five, read a dark or hard-hitting contemporary. My least read type of contemporary novel. So this will be interesting. Six, read a contemporary with an illustrated cover. Shouldn't be that hard considering everything has an illustrated cover now. And seven, read a contemporary that is beloved by a member of the book community. All right, so let me go ahead and tell you about the four books that I have chosen for my TBR. Starting off with Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. This book is about a girl named Eliza who is awkward and friendless and considered weird by her peers. But online, she has an alternate identity where she creates a wide wildly popular webcomic, but nobody in her real life knows about it. And then the fandom of the webcomic's most prolific and popular fanfiction writer transfers to Eliza's school and they build a friendship. But this fanfiction writer, whose name is Wallace, doesn't know that Eliza is the author of the webcomic. And then when her secrets start to be revealed, it disrupts Eliza's life and she feels like things are falling apart. This book covers fandom, obviously, but it also covers mental illness. It covers friendship and romance and web comics and I'm very excited to read it. I have no excuse for why I haven't since it did come out several years ago but this one can count for several challenges. Green on the cover, illustrated cover, a backlist TBR title, and dark or hard-hitting contemporary I think. Next up on my TBR is Light It Up by Kekla Magoon. This book is about the shooting death by a police officer of a 13 year old girl and it's told in 16 different perspectives. I have actually already started this but several months ago so I will start it again. I met Kekla Magoon at YALSA, which is the Young Adult Library Services Association Conference. I was there a few months ago and she was a speaker. She signed copies of this. I did talk to her very briefly and I have a signed copy. I am very excited to read this. It has an illustrated cover. It's a diverse title. Kekla is African American. It's certainly dark and hard hitting and Kekla is a new to me author. This will be my first novel of hers that I read. Next up on my TBR is Birthday by Meredith Russo. This is another book that I have a signed copy of because I did briefly meet Meredith Russo at at Yalsa. This book is told in two perspectives, two best friends, Morgan and Eric, who have known each other their entire lives, literally since birth. And Morgan is transgender. They have been friends their whole life, but then maybe it turns into romance. And I have heard such good things about this. This one is going to count as a new to me author. I haven't actually read Meredith's other novel, so this will be my first. And also diverse because Meredith herself is transgender and it's about a transgender character. And then the last book on my TBR is The Last Letter by Rebecca Yarrow. This one is going to satisfy the challenge of a beloved book from another member of the book community. I actually heard about this from Steph at Steph's Romance Book Talk. She spoke about this book with such emotion it immediately made me want to pick it up. This is about a woman whose husband has died in combat and before he dies he writes a letter to his best friend who he has served with in the military to basically go home and take care of his wife and his family after he has died. You're following that relationship, the relationship of the friend and the main character. And I have heard that this is a lot about grief. It's a lot about familial love. There is a romance, but it's not central. And I'm very excited, but very nervous to read it. Steph mentioned this book in her 2019 best of video, which I'll link down below. And she specifically said she thinks people who have 
loved ones who fought in the military and people who have lost people in the military that, that it would be especially poignant for them. My dad was in the military. He is a, a veteran. He has been deployed during wartime. So I do certainly know what that experience is like. I think that this will be a very powerful book. I know it's sort of divisive. Uh, Steph herself mentioned that it's polarizing and not everybody enjoys the twists and turns of the novel, but I'm excited to give it a go. So that's it. That's my TBR for contemporary -a -thon 2020. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought. And if you're doing contemporary -a -thon, I'd love to hear what your TBR is as well. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>